Okay. So where was I? Oh yeah. I'm going home now. Had a nice day today. Fitted a fantastic bridge. Going from a three to a six. Unusual for me. Only because uh, I don't like the, the massive, massive long span bridges, but this guy, I've known him for a very long time. He's got a good uh, history of success with dental treatment and he's, he's a sensible bloke, so I can trust him not to eat a chocolate eclair on it. And um, also the three's like a banana and the six obviously is a multi-rooted too. So as far as anti, anti's law goes, it sort of uh, probably works all right. Anyway, we'll see. That's not what you want to hear about though, is it? You don't want to hear about the fact. Oh, just to, took a tooth out of a bloke. He came in, said, I want to have a tooth out. And I said, well, it's all it's got, just got some decay in it, you know? Oh, uh, I said, he said, well, I've, I've come in for your advice. So well, my advice is to have a filling. Otherwise you'll end up with no teeth, you know. So he's like, all right then, okay, I'll have a filling. So I had this one patient who came in probably two, three years ago and uh, he had a filling done and then it turned out that the nerve had died in the tooth, which happens in about 20% of the cases where um, the, the nerve's in a bad state, you know. It's already hypersensitive or, or the decay's near the nerve or whatever. Um, the 15 to 20% of the nerves die. And this is included in the bump we send out, but of course nobody reads a bump, do I, today. So uh, he, he had this filling and then he ended up needing a root, root treatment. And then he sent me a letter saying that he wanted a refund for the filling. Oh, which I was a bit annoyed about because uh, our root fillings include a filling, so they include filling up the access hole. So in fact, he not only had he had one filling, he'd had two fillings in effect, we'd only charged him for one. So I said, look, I'm not going to refund your... your uh, filling the cost of your filling just because you needed a root treatment and he's like well uh, he said I'm a like he said I'm a surveyor and he said if I uh, someone asked me to do a survey and I told him something and then it turned out that they needed something else he said I wouldn't I couldn't charge them for the thing that I originally told them that they needed if if that wasn't what they needed and I said you you got I said, it's a bit like, you know, going round and being asked to provide a quote for a roof and then finding out that the, the house has got subsidence. I said, you can't quote, you can't ask for the um, refund for the cost of doing the roof just because you ended up paying for the cost of the, treating the subsidence as well, you know. Anyway, something must have clicked because I think he probably... He, he, he didn't under, I mean he understood at that point I think mainly because I was speaking to him in language that he's, uh, he understood but it doesn't always work like that you know and uh, we have uh, the way it works in dentistry is very different from the way it works in medicine so like for example if you went into a doctor and you said doctor I've got an ingrown toenail I want you to amputate my toe and the doctor would say you know piss off you daft bugger I'm not amputating a toe just because you've got an ingrown toenail. What you need is treatment for the ingrown toenail. And nobody would really argue with that. You know, if you put that scenario to anybody, let alone a doctor, they would probably say, yeah, of course, of course. And yet you get someone in who's got some decay in a tooth that could be root treated and they ask for it to be extracted. And, um, <laughs> It's, exact, it's the exact opposite. It was like, you know, well, it's his tooth. If he wants to have it extracted and he's been told what his options are and extraction is an option, which, you know, is, I, I suppose it's because we give them extraction as an option. If we didn't, 
Supposing I said that your options are, are a filling or a root filling, but extraction is not an option, then uh, probably they leave them free to go and see another dentist, isn't it? Who, who would give them extraction as an option? But um, it was the only question I asked when I did some dental interviewing a few years ago. I think I might have mentioned this. But the, the one question I asked, uh, I think I was interviewing for vocational training scheme. And I said to um, the, these uh, young dentists, um, now they weren't young dentists actually, they were, they were experienced dentists who were applying to be vocational trainers. That's true, to take on young dentists and pass on their wisdom. And I said to them, look here, let me give you a scenario. Um, patient comes in with a relatively minor problem, easily fixed, but says they don't want it fixed, they want the tooth extracted. I said, well, what would you do? And not one of them said I would send the patient somewhere else or I would not give them extraction as an option. And for those who uh, said straight away, well, I would take the tooth out, when I asked them why, you know, what, what was the reasoning behind their decision, they all said, well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. You know, <laughs> the, old, the arms, arms dealer argument. You know, if I don't sell tanks and guns, then some other buggers are going to get the profit. And it shocked me a bit that uh, they should be so keen to uh, euthanize perfectly healthy teeth in the pursuit of profit, which is the conclusion I came to, and um, which was uniform across the profession. So, you know, sure, apparently that's just the way we do it. Anyway, when this bloke came in, uh, I said to him, uh, I just want to check with you one last time that you fully understand although we discussed it last time and I've sent you a wad of paperwork uh, explaining exactly this that we might fill it the nerve might die off and you might end up needing a root filling and or an extraction at extra cost and he's like yeah 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 we'll, we'll fill it and then fingers crossed that'll work you know and then I think and also you have to sort of look at that right that aspect of it this um, the being in denial that a lot of patients are in denial that things can go wrong you know uh, in my actual in my actual quote it says success is not guaranteed and I got that from a um, European uh, magazine uh, which basically um, I, I think it was a UK magazine that had a European dentist write an article on consent and basically he had reprinted his his own consent letter and from his consent letter it may, it may have been implant consent uh, or it might have been a general consent anyway it started off with success is not guaranteed yeah so and basically his argument was that you can still you can do the best job that you know uh, things can still go wrong things cannot work out things cannot be as you thought they were uh, things can be better or they can be worse they can go well or they can go badly but what, what you can't do is you can't promise a patient an outcome what you can do is promise them an attempt to achieve an outcome but you can't promise them the outcome in the same way as you can uh, you know it's, all, it's, a, it's a good idea to uh, have a quality of um, quality of access but you can't achieve a quality of outcome so so anyway he said yeah 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 and, uh, yeah we'll, we'll do the filling and um, you know and there's fingers crossed the filling will work and I won't need to need a, need a root filling or an extraction anyway so we got him like properly numbed up and uh, started um, taking his filling out and the, it was a bit sensitive this tooth and I, and I looked and sure enough underneath the filling there was, there, was a, there was quite a bit of decay more than enough for it to need a root filling so I said so I took the rubber dam off again so I took it all off again and I said to him look this is the situation I said it is as I expected there's a lot of decay underneath this filling and I can now say it's pretty certain that you do need a root filling 
So does that mean you can't save the tooth? No, I can still save the tooth, but it means it's going to take more time and it's going to cost more money. Well, that was it, wasn't it? It was the, the cost more money thing. So he then said, uh, take it out. So then I could take it out. So I thought, You're, you have just literally given consent to have a filling done on the basis that it might need a root filling, in which case you obviously would have had to have paid for it. And, but now, now you've been presented with the decision. Uh, see, Mr. P3. AYX, that's not very good driving. You can send these CCT clips off to the police now. If you see anybody being a dickhead. Anyway, it's going to be uh, preserved on YouTube for posterity as a bit of a white van. Dressed uh, up as a BMW. So, <clears throat> so there you are, see, so because. If you do the filling, suppose you do the filling, what are you doing? You think that you're doing your best for the patient. You're saving the tooth, right? You're preventing an extraction. You're guiding the patient towards being more conservative in terms of um, not losing their teeth. And it, this is a young guy. I mean, he's in his 20s, I think. And, um, and yeah, what, what happens is you fill the tooth and he will then ring up... Uh, later and two weeks later say that filling you did you know that bloody filling you did it's been a nightmare I've had nothing but twinges and sensitivity from the tooth ever since and now it's throbbing at night and, <clears throat> and uh, you must have done the filling wrong you've, you've done something wrong something wrong with the filling <clears throat> and either I want a refund or but I can't stay like this you know and then you say, well, do you remember that very long conversation we had twice, plus all the paperwork I sent you saying that this might happen? You know, well, I don't know about that. All I know is that I can't, I've had no sleep for two days and I need it fixed. And I'm not paying to, to have it all done again when it's your filling that's caused all the trouble. So you're not hiding to nothing, really. If somebody comes in, so all of a sudden I can understand why there's, all these dentists said, don't argue with the patient. Take the bloody tooth now. Just don't argue. Take the money. <laughs> <coughs> so I said to him, all right, I said, that's not a problem. I said, we're lucky in a way that we know, we've been able to tell at an early stage that, that we need to change the treatment plan. The treatment plan now becomes an extraction because a root filling would be expensive and he doesn't really want to spend the money on his teeth. So he, um, in fact, I only think he opted for the filling because I told him the filling would be cheaper than the extraction. And, uh, and both, either would be cheaper than the root treatment. So, so uh, anyway, because he was done, we took the tooth out and um, He's happy as a, anything, He's, he thinks it's great. And um, he owes me the difference between the filling and the extraction, which all of a sudden he forgot his wallet, he doesn't got his credit card, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. This bloke drives up in a massive great Mercedes. All of a sudden now can't pay a, a, a few uh, score. That's just the, little, the difference between the treatment that we he's reinforced him for and the treatment that he had. He promised to pay by next Friday, which leads me to suspect that um, he's a self-employed PR guy. It leads me to suspect perhaps his business is not doing all that brilliantly, and uh, it's a pay it's a payroll related issue. You know. Perhaps he gets paid weekly. And anyway, I live in hope. <laughs> I, I live in hope that he'll uh, he will pay that that invoice uh, because there are very few people ways that people can get away with um, getting money off of us now we uh, invoice in advance uh, but coming in and uh, requesting uh, or needing a treatment that's more expensive than anticipated and 
and then uh, saying that you don't have the means to pay is probably about the last way you could still do it. You know? So, um, yeah, and I'll tell you, so I haven't got time to tell you about dental law, but I'll have to tell you about that next week. Sometime. The, uh, we bought three of these um, Italian little hinge articulators. Nice, you know, they're adjustable. They're designed for technicians to set uh, casts up on and uh, articulate and do the bite and everything. And a lot of them just use one and they, they put all the casts on the one articulator, you know. Um, they're not massively expensive, about 300 quid each. But they were doing them like on a special offer, so I decided to um, buy a few and then what we're doing is we are taking primary and secondary impressions and the buying and then when we uh, cast up the second impressions or the lab cast up the second impressions we are checking the we are we are articulating them so we use my buy it and articulate them and then uh, at the trying stage when they come back for the trying we can then tell if the dry-in is going to be okay in the patient's mouth. Now, you know, it may or it may not come as a surprise to you that uh, technicians are a little bit variable about how much care and attention they take when they are articulating these um, plaster casts. And for the most part, if they do it by eye, they eyeball it by, by hand, then uh, you're probably not um, at all unusual. But we had a partial upper back the other day, it was a chrome. I tried the chrome in previously, it fitted like a glove. So we'd send it off to have the teeth put on. And um, so what I did was I articulated the secondary casts in the, uh, in the Arctic using my bite and then put the denture on the try-in and it, the, it was nowhere near, it was nowhere near. So. Either my bite was horrendously wrong or the try-in was horrendously wrong. But either way, we didn't have to wait until the patient came in to find that out. So, I'll tell you back to the... Uh, when the patient came in, what happened was I got them to um, uh, bite together into my wax block. And sure enough, my wax block is perfect in terms of... Uh, centric relation and also uh, OVD and on these little uh, Italian Arctics you can you can set the OVD so um, <clears throat> so uh, that and that was all we did at that point we just uh, confirmed that we like the color and just double check the buy and then uh, took the um, articulated cast round to the technician and said look this is what we sent you basically and this is what you're giving us back and when he when we we put his trying on the articulator uh, it was quite painfully wrong you know I mean he just I don't know let's just say he'd, he'd articulated them guessed the bite wrong um, so um, basically you know could we have them reset up again and and we leave them with the articulator and we say look this is the bite uh, can we uh, have them re can you reset them up on on our Arctic and send them back and then we can then put our bite on it again when we get them back and check you haven't changed it you know fiddle with any of the knobs and then and we can also put your try in on our Arctic and check that it's correct on the bite and if necessary to grind anything in or whatever 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 you know and then we know then that when the denture, the trying, goes in the patient's mouth, they're just going to go, and it's going to be perfect, yeah. And so there we are, end of end of um, wax knife and Bunsen burner at the trying stage. So that's a little tip for those of you um, interested in doing high quality work and early adopters like me of new techniques. Get yourself some of these little um, brass. And aluminium articulators and 
get a permanent marker and, and put your postcode on, I'm telling you, because they, they're the sort of thing that might go walkies, but our technician's only next door, so I, I know where to find them. But um, yeah, that, that's good. Anyway, I'll tell you about Dental Law Partnership next time we talk. All right, sorry, you're going to have to wait. Sorry, sorry. All right, bye.